as a teenage DC fan back in another video. And following the events of last week's episode of Batwoman, it seemed like Kate would have no choice but to explain everything to Sophie, who had definitely figured out that she was behind Gotham's newest hero. Turns out the truth is a lot more complicated, and that is explained in this episode. Meanwhile, after stealing the only gun in Gotham that can kill Batwoman, Alice is in cahoots with a sharpshooter, and Alfred's daughter is in town to catch him. So, warning, spoilers ahead for Baum Season 1, Episode 7, Tell Me the Truth. So, let's get right into it. Now, I've got to admit right out of the gate that I love this week's episode, and have a lot of thoughts regarding everything that happened, but those thoughts have almost nothing to do with this week's extremely weak bad guy. Um, so, let's get that out of the way first, shall we? So after shooting at Gotham's swankiest new restaurant, Kate, the Crows, and Hamilton Dynamics are all on the trail of a man known as The Rifle. I mean, what kind of stupid name is that? Like, when you're trying to come up with a villain name, you want something that will strike fear into the hearts of your enemies. But The Rifle, I mean, that, that's the name of a weapon you can use. But, uh, don't call yourself that. Like, why would you do that? That's just a little stupid. But anyway, the rifle has taken out one of Catherine Hamilton's scientists and only narrowly avoided killing the second. Both of those men, along with the one Mouse killed last week, worked on the same project. The coil accelerated, which is the only gun that can kill Batwoman, or Batman. Alice, it turns out, is somehow working with the rifle. I mean, the rifle. And whoever he is working for to steal the gun and take out Batwoman. Alice offers a trade, which the rifle. And his employer agree to w what it was they stole for her is as, is as yet unclear. Um, but Alice turns over the gun, but not before altering it, so it is no more deadly to Batwoman than any other weapon. Choosing to protect her sister at all costs, realizing the gun is useless, the rifle, leaves Gotham, although his parting words to Alice are a foreboding declaration that she has rightlessly, righteously ticked off his employer. Now, who is his employer? We don't know. But maybe we'll find out at some point. Meanwhile, Jacob and Catherine are filing for divorce. Big surprise. But it may not have have been Jacob at all this week. As it turns out, Mouse has taken over his identity. And he is now Alice's captive. Now, I'll admit this part was a little fuzzy. I assume he was captured before the start of the episode. And it was never Jacob who returned from upstate. But the end of the episode was extremely emotional, so, I mean, I might have missed something. Speaking of which, the dial on deep emotional t turmoil up, up to 11 this week, and there's actually a lot to unpack. So, the pilot episode of Batwoman gave us the bullet points of what went down between Kate and Sophie at Point Rock. After they're caught together, they're told that they can deny their relationship and sexuality and stay or admit it and be removed. Kate admits it. Sophie chooses to lie. At the time, I pointed out how interesting and important it was for the show to deal with the idea that these two women come from different circumstances and that those circumstances play a role in the way they might handle a situation like this. It's not as simple as black and white right and wrong, and this week we learned that the situation between them is so much greater than it appeared even a few short weeks ago. Because this week, it's Kate who faces a decision. Come clean to Sophie about who she really is, or lie. So this week, Kate is the one who chooses to lie. Again, it is more complicated than what is right, or what is easy, or what is true. It's about safety. So Kate and Sophie are two different types of people um, who experience and express their personalities in different ways. Um, 
and they understand things differently, and they carry their identities differently. And Kate is the overconfident, reckless one who's fueled by spite and a deep secret feeling of insecurity masked by a heavy dose of bravado. Sophie wears her insecurities like a shield. They keep her guarded, protect her from being hurt. She's in control because she always feels like she's one tiny mistake away from losing everything. Kate's burn it down, burn it all down approach. The people who refuse to tolerate her existence is admirable, but it comes from a place of security. She knows she will have a place to go when the smoke clears. Sophie is never entirely certain she won't be left out in the cold. Back when they were at the academy, Kate and her family were the only people who knew the truth about Sophie. Her parents didn't know, and apparently they still don't know, because apparently her parents were completely against that type of thing. And when they f were found out, Kate convinced her to come clean, to risk everything in order to maintain their dignity in the face of r ridicules, um, outdated, ridiculous, outdated rule. And she almost did, because when Kate was her world, that world was safe. But the second she stepped outside their bubble and was faced with the reality of what they were about to do, she remembered why she wa wasn't out to her parents or to the world, because everything she knew about that world told her it would reject her, hate her, punish her. So she lied, because it was safer, safer, because it's all about safety. Um, so anyway, denying who she was, um, then may have cost her Kate, but Sophie got a career and a life and, whether we like it or not, a husband who loves her, which was honestly probably the most surprising thing that I've seen on this show so far. Um, but now the tables have turned because it is Sophie who is in a more secure position. Now, Kate is the one with the secret, the one who faces terrible consequences if it is revealed. Sophie wants to tell Jacob that Kate is Batwoman because keeping the secret could mean Kate is killed by the crows. But Kate knows that if her dad found out that he would shut down the Batwoman operation in a second. Now, it's Kate who believes that telling the truth will cause her entire world to crumble. And so, she lies because it's safer. It's always about safety on this show. Rather than telling Sophie that, yes, she is Batwoman, Kate uses Julia Pennyworth. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not really talking about her much, that there's a reason. Um, to help keep, keep her secret, forcing herself, once again, to stand in the vigilante closet. Something that is proven to be counter to everything Kate usually stands for. Instead, Kate tearfully explains that their continued complicated feelings for each other are unfair to everyone involved including Sophie's husband, and the best way to fix this is for Kate to steer clear from f from Sophie for a while. Sophie, for her part, gives Kate back the sharpshooter medal that was taken from her when she was kicked out of the academy. And just to drive the knife deeper, the entire exchange is set to the world's most perfect song for this terrible, heart-wrenching moment, uh, which was a very emotional moment. Um, so anyway, uh, that's pr pretty much what happened in the episode. Uh, now I really felt for Mary this week. All, all she's wanted since we met her is to have an actual relationship with Kate and Kate hasn't opened up now with everything going on with the parents. She certainly feels like she's about to lose her chance. Um, now the upside seems like the bright spot in the episode is that Mary is being pulled further into Kate's inner circle. They'll probably work on Kate's new nightclub together, and there's no way you show Mary the secret Batcave door without eventually letting her get behind it, and soon, I hope. Um, so superheroes owning nightclubs is a thing, I guess. Then again, it does match the party girl exterior that Kate has in the comics. I mean, what's she going to call it, though? What do you guys think she's going to call this new nightclub? Uh, uh, let me know down in the comments below. So next week, Alice has Jacob, so we're heading back to Wonderland, and it's not going to be a happy family reunion. 
Um, and actually, this episode of Batwoman is not new next week, so we have to wait until, I believe it's December 1st. Um, I don't know for sure, but I know it's that first week in December. Um, so it won't be on next week, but Batwoman will be new again the week after next week. So we have to wait a little bit for a new episode, but it's definitely worth the wait. Uh, but other than that, I really like this episode. What did you guys think about it? Post your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in my next video so I can bestow all my decent knowledge upon you.